It turns out you're probably using enums wrong. And I mean, I can't possibly know this for sure, but statistically from what I've seen in code bases, I don't think people are using enums properly. In this video, we're gonna walk through some code where I show you some different usages of enums and why I think that we're not set up for success when you use enums in this particular way. If you're still new to using enums or you're not really familiar with them, you can go ahead and watch this video here and that's gonna walk you through this video series to bring you to this point where we talk about enum usage. Before I jump over to Visual Studio, just a quick reminder to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter. I try to include an exclusive article and early access to a video that will be coming out on my YouTube channel the next week. There's also some coding tips and coding exercises, as well as a recap on the different content that I've shared from the week. There's no catch, no strings attached, and it's totally free, so I'll include the link in the comments below and you can check that out. Now keep the rambling short, let's get over to Visual Studio and talk about why I think people are using enums the wrong way. Alright, on my screen I have a product enum that I've defined, and we can see that we have some things like courses in here, some subscriptions, and some ebooks. And this is a pretty common pattern that I see when people are declaring enums, and the thing that I want to call out here is that this is a set of values that is not necessarily fixed. And what do I mean by that? Well, perhaps if I were to only ever offer three courses, three subscriptions, and three eBooks, this would be considered a fixed set of values. But the reality is, if I were creating courses and subscriptions and eBooks, it would be in my best interest to continue offering more. And that's going to mean that this enum is growing and changing over time. And for example, adding a new course is simply adding a new entry to this enum, but what happens if I want to turn off a course? What if I never want to sell it again and I want to make sure that it doesn't exist in my code? The implications of having enums that have sets of values that can change are very significant. And while this is a really common practice that I see people using enums for, I think that the correct way or the safest way to use an enum is to use it on sets of data that are not ever changing. And sometimes that feels a little bit constrained because not ever changing, like how do we possibly know if it's never gonna change? Well, consider things that either do never change or should be changing extremely infrequently. An example of things that never change are the days of the week. The days of the week are a great example for an enum because you can declare it once and it should never have to change. The same thing with months of the year. That's something that is fixed, it's finite, and it's never going to change. You may also have situations where you have something like a state machine in your code. And if there's a finite set of states, you might be in a great position to use something like an enum to represent those different states. However, even something like a state machine that may grow over time and change over time, even if it's unlikely, that might mean that we have some of these costs of an enum changing, which we'll walk through in just a moment. So before we look at some more code for how we consume the enum, I just wanted to pause for a moment to say that this is my interpretation of best practices for using enums. I don't mean to tell you this like you can't ever use an enum in the way that I was just illustrating with the different products and subscriptions and things like that. You can do it, but I think there's going to be costs in there and you may want to avoid doing something like this because I think that the overhead and the repercussions of doing that are a little bit hidden up front and they're costly down the road. So it's not that you can't, it's just that I think that there are better ways to do it. When you have an enum that is a fixed set of values, you're not gonna run into these same challenges. You can rest assured that when you're consuming that enum, you have code that you can write that's operating on a fixed number of different states for that enum. That means that your error handling can be greatly reduced and you don't have to worry about edge cases that might exist or might not exist in the future. So let's go see what I mean by that. So if we wanna go see how we can consume this product enum, I just wanted to walk through some example code that's a little bit contrived, but it shows you some different patterns for how things get consumed. One really common primitive case that most people notice and try to move away from is a big chained if else statement. So for example, here I'm doing a product check if the product is dev leader subscription one, go do some stuff. Otherwise, if it's course one, go do some other stuff. And we could go continue this pattern doing some handling in here and then having some else condition for some exceptional case or maybe we wanna log something or do some other behavior. But the point is that we have this big if else statement that's built up. If we're dealing with an enum that has a fixed number of values for its entire lifetime of your application, 
So again, something like days of the week, months of the year, something fixed. That means that if we go write this if statement and it's a little bit ugly, at least the different conditions that we have to check for are a finite number of states. If you have something that could possibly be growing or changing in any way, that's going to mean that this code eventually has to be updated to handle it. Otherwise, if it's not, you may run into situations where you're hitting this exceptional case more often than you should, or it's going to mean that if you remove something from the enum, perhaps you have to come over to this code and go delete an else condition. And while that might not seem so bad in this example, the reality is that when we have enum usage in a code base, it's very common that we'll have sets of if else statements like this scattered around different spots. And each spot that we go have some type of if else statement like this, it's going to mean that when we update that enum, we have to go update all of those spots as well. It becomes something that seems simple on the surface and seems perhaps readable and understandable in this context, but there's a maintenance burden associated with that every time you want to go touch that enum. So the next thing that people might say is, well, let's go improve this because an if else statement is pretty nasty. We can go use something like a switch statement instead. And you can. So I've demonstrated that here where you can go add new cases or remove them. You have a default to go handle the exceptional case or however you want to handle something that's not in this enum set. The problem is still the same thing. If you're ever changing the different values that are inside of this product enum, you do have to go touch all of the places consuming it. So that will mean, just like the if statements, that if you have something not handled by a case, because you've gone ahead and added a new product, you might be hitting this block of code more frequently. And the inverse, if you go remove something, it's going to mean that anytime you have a switch statement anywhere in your code that's working on the product enum type, you may have to go remove a case that was accounted for in the first place. So the switch statement might look a little bit cleaner, it might make some people more happy to work with, it's still the same type of problem. And then people might say, okay, well, if statements and switch statements, those really suck for this kind of thing, but we can go make a mapping of all of the different enum types that we have and how to handle that. So I'll demonstrate that as well. And we have it here, and I've kind of indicated that something like this declaration probably belongs at a class level or something not directly in a method that would be executed every time. But how does this end up working? Well, if we have a lookup where we can go check for the product type and we can go ask to try to get the value out of it and then execute the handler here, and if it's not there, we have this else condition that's just like the other scenarios, what does this look like if the product is changing? Well, if we go add a new product, we still have to go add a new entry into this mapping. So if we don't go do that, especially because this could and probably will exist in multiple spots in the code base, we're going to be hitting this exceptional case more often. And again, if we remove a product, it's the same thing where we have to go update this mapping. So you can keep thinking up different variations of how you can go handle this, whether it's if statements, switch statements, maps, and different lookups, whatever it happens to be. The point is that it's not actually going to matter. Yes, doing that kind of stuff can help improve the readability of your code, but I think that the reality is that if you're dealing with a fixed enum, that kind of stuff is going to be helpful. But when it's not a fixed enum and it can change over time, the real problem is how many spots in your code you're doing that. So you can totally refute everything I'm saying if you're suggesting that you only have one spot in your code that has an enum like that and you want to work with it and that way you're moving from a switch statement to a lookup that's in a dictionary. Sure, like that's going to help improve the readability, in my opinion at least, and it will not have the same problems that I just explained because you'll only have to update it in one spot. That's great. So I'm not trying to say conclusively as a rule you can never do this. In fact, I'm saying it's the opposite. You could go ahead and do this. And I've worked in very successful production code bases that had stuff like this scattered everywhere, multiple different enums like this in many different spots. I'm sharing this with you from my own personal and professional experience over a decade of working in C Sharp of people using enums in different ways. What I found is that when you're using enums that are a fixed number of different states that you can exist in, 
refactoring things from changes doesn't have to happen because you're not changing the number of enum states that can exist. When you have enums that can change in the number of different values inside of it, and you have more than one spot in the code base that needs to account for that, you're increasing the amount of maintenance and work that you have to do every time you touch it. If it is something that's gonna change, but it's extremely rare, that maintenance overhead is greatly reduced. So that's a really good position to be in. I've seen this when people are creating state machines, where at some point in time, there's a finite set of states and the state machine works really well. And they're using enums for those states, so there may be a handful of different spots that check those enum values. It all works, it's great. And then maybe a year down the line, someone goes, you know what, we have to revamp this state machine to account for something else. We'll extend it. They go update that enum, so there's one new state, and at that point in time, they're paying that maintenance cost for having a few things scattered around checking the enum. So does that mean that they made the wrong decision? Well, no, not necessarily. It's a low maintenance cost when it's changing either never or infrequently. But for something like a product that I just demonstrated in these earlier examples, if you have a set of products that you're extending or changing or altering in whatever way, it's going to mean that that enum is probably changing semi-regularly. And the maintenance overhead, like I said, is gonna be pretty dramatic depending on how many spots you have it. So TLDR, if you can, please try to keep your enums to a finite set of things. Otherwise, an enum might not be the right thing for you. Again, this is my opinion from my professional experience. And I think that it's important to take different perspectives into play. So if you want to see me explain more about that concept of interpreting different perspectives, watch this video next.